I hope that the work that I'm doing now and, and will do in the future it goes farther toward reaching that goal of figuring out the true relationship between music and the public. My name is Josh Kuhn. I'm a writer, cultural historian, and curator of public humanities. Music, of course, crosses and moves across communities and cultural boundaries with a, with a kind of ease and fluidity that many other art forms don't necessarily have. I'm interested in what music tells us about the past, how it helps us survive the present, and how it can help people imagine new futures. So I listen to where um, songs connect up with other songs, where you might open up the history of a song and realize that what you think of uh, as a rhythm and blues song actually has pieces that come from an Irish tradition or has pieces that come from a Mexican tradition. Breaking songs open in that way, we're able to understand the long histories of cultural layering, cultural exchange, but also cultural, deep cultural conflict that goes into the making of the things that we often very casually just think of as entertainment. The kind of king example here would be Herb Alpert, who is a Jewish American musician who left Los Angeles uh, on a whim as a tourist to go see a bullfight and uh, was in the bull ring and heard a mariachi fanfare that struck him. He came back to Los Angeles and emulated the mariachi horns that he heard in the fanfare uh, and uh, put that on record and created a, a song called The Lonely Bull. And that song's been really important to a lot of my scholarship because I think it's a key of unlocking the role that the California-Mexico border has played in the shaping both of California identity, um, but also American identity broadly. As a scholar, following the rules of doing traditional, conventional, rigorous scholarship uh, is important to me. But it's only important to me if those conversations move outside of my classrooms and move outside of the academic communities that maybe they begin in. This project, To Live and Dine in LA, uh, grew out of uh, the Library Foundation of Los Angeles when they asked me if I would go through the incredible historic menu collection, over 13,000 restaurant menus. For To Live and Dine in LA, we, we did a series of public programs, uh, including a massive exhibition where we put the menus on display in a very creative way at a big um, kind of extended dinner table. It was our attempt to say that let's put on a record and all sit down together and all, in our own ways, interact with the, a with the cultural past that might help us produce a new kind of cultural present or a new kind of cultural future. I think that this fellowship is going to help me a great deal to be more selective in the projects that I choose and to, to have the luxury, which and it is a deep, deep luxury and privilege, um, to be able to pursue the things that I love. <laughs>